So I'm Clarista, I'm a member of the Mozilla's community, uh, and I'm uh, what I have called an average Jane. Uh, it would have been, uh, it should have been uh, Mrs. Nobody or uh, or Mrs. Jendo, something like that. I've chosen average Jane, but uh, you can choose uh, the the word you want to define us. Um, so, who are average Jane and Joe? That could be us, for instance. I'm quite look like this these girls. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> be sure that according to me, uh, the word the expression average Jane or Joe isn't pejorative at all, really. Uh, because I'm an average Jane as a contributor, I claim I am an average Jane, in fact. I think that it's my personality as an average Jane that can bring a lot of things to Floss and to the Mozilla community. So to be an average Jane or Joe, um, according to me, it means that um, you're not technical. Sometimes you don't even know what Floss is. Um, and if you have some difficulties to make the, sometimes you have the, so, some difficulties to make the difference between floss and open web, for instance. And I know it's just awful to you, but that's that's like it, that. In fact, so what? We we don't we don't do the difference. So we are not technical. We we are not conceptual. Uh, uh, but it doesn't mean that we have nothing to bring to the community. And I hope to show you that we have a lot of things to bring to the community as average Jane or Joe. Um, so I hope to convince you uh, about uh, all we can bring as average Jane and Joe, because I want you to make some efforts to welcome us. Really, um, I want you to think about what you can do to welcome people like me, uh, to, wel to welcome people that are no technical, no conceptual. So I will tell you my first steps in the community. Um, and I'm warning you, really. Um, geeks are going to take it for their rank. So the only thing you need to listen to this talk is sense of humor. Please, <laughs> really. Don't forget, I'm in love with a geek. It's been six years. I'm still with him. So it's. That's something, something I like the community, finally. I love him, I love Mozilla, but I know he is a geek, and I know his defaults, and I'll t I ha I'll highlight them. So just keep your sense of humor. And at the end, if you want to talk with me, there's no problem, I assume. So my first steps in the community, in the Mozilla's community in my case, but it would have been the same in the all, all the communities in Floss. Um, this is my gig. <laughs> he has strange passions, you know? Um, the first time I met a herd of gigs um, was quite astonishing, really. Uh, you know, when you are a person that uh, never have thought about what is an uh, operating system, for instance, you really find them very strange. The first time you meet a geek, you can get surprised. I mean, they have strange t-shirts. <laughs> and not only do they have uh, strange shirts, they are proud of it. <laughs> they have sometimes sinister look. And they are also proud of it. Um, or they have strange attitudes. Strange hobbies, you know? And I finally discovered that uh, it was often the result of beers. <laughs> and they have incredible matters of debate for, uh, for people like me, you know? Um, they can pass, take a lot, something like two hours of debating of what is better between Ubuntu, Gentoo, Debian, OpenSUSE, Fedora, Red Flags, Arch Linux, LFS, Global Linux, Mandriva, Dwinu Linux, or Nixos. <gasps> okay, can you imagine how you feel when you don't even know what Linux is? And that nobody takes care of explaining you what Linux is. 
because they feel normal to talk about Debian Gen 2, extra, extra. So, I have to admit that the first time I, f I met some geeks, I felt lonely, really, and I was quite afraid of this universe. But I finally discovered that geeks are great, and Floss is just splendid. Once I have found a translator, because I needed a translator, that was my boyfriend, but uh, fortunately, not only my boyfriend, because he is real a geek and a big geek, um, I found someone whose name is Pascal Chevrel, and he was very patient with me. So he was my translator in this universe, and uh, thanks to him, I began to understand. Of course, I didn't understand everything, but I managed to perceive the Mozilla's philosophy, the Floss philosophy. And I realized that even if they are definitely strange, the community, the, the, they are doing in fact something which is very um, full of generosity. And I finally admired them. So I think they are strange, they are very, very strange, but now I understand that they are doing something for the, the world, something for a better internet. In, in Mozilla, and so I really I love them for what they are doing, and I'm proud of being with them. And that's why I decided to help them, because I wanted to contribute and to participate to this great philosophy. And um, not only I discovered what they are doing, but I discovered what is the community. And that was very important to me, because uh, according to me, uh, the community is something very incredible. Uh, you mean, I mean, you can live in France and receive some um, help from South Africa, Canada, China, etc. And we all share a philosophy. Um, we share the will of getting an open web and share ideas to promote flows. And that's, um, best, that's most important to me than technical things, you know. I know that if I can't share technical opinions, I can't share um, some, some um, uh, masters of, uh, of technical things, I can share this philosophy and I can uh, understand what they are doing and helping them. So, what is very astonishing is that thanks to the community, I even managed to be more technical, a little. Um, for instance, I had a real revelation when I discovered the difference between Java and JavaScript. Because for a non-technical person like me, Java, JavaScript, okay, it's an extension. <laughs> and not at all. Um, I even received a, manage, a marriage proposal uh, the day I advised a kinesiologist to a man who wanted to learn Emacs. So now the Mozilla and Floss is definitely a great part of my life, but I'm still, and I want to stay an average Jane. And I'm sure I'm quite useful to Floss as an average Jane. Because geeks have a dependency, the general public. The community uh, is closely tied, is closely knit, but it's a quite small community. And um, it needs to grow more and more. But you can't grow if you stay um, between geeks you can't open you to the rest of the world if you stay in between gigs and if you only accept gigs. So um, I think that uh, the general public should more enter the community. The problem is that gigs lives, live in isolation. They often have the impression that uh, they are right, the impression that they are in possession of the truth. That's what I feel. And overall, they often think everybody understands what they say and what they do. All right, if you do think so, I can tell you, you're wrong. From my point of view, you say and do a lot of incomprehensible things. Really. The consequence is that sometimes geeks create sites or software that only they are able to use or control. So how do you want to see the flaws invade the world if only a few people can understand. i let you read this. I found it very, very representative of what I feel. 
and uh, of what geeks seems, seem to do. RTFM? Great. Very easy. You don't often take care of the general public, I mean. So geeks need average Jane or Joe to understand what the public really want or need, really. And you can also take advantage of average Jane or Joe in your communities. They'll become the link between you and the public. For instance, uh, with Mozilla, we went to Senegal uh, to uh, participate to the creation of the Mozilla's community in Senegal. And um, I was part of the, tri the trip because um, they wanted me to present what was Mozilla. And it was, um, they, they chose me because uh, they thought that I was able to speak, to speak with simple words and simple ideas. And it worked really because um, I first, in fact, we began the, um, our trip by uh, giving a large conference saying what Mozilla is, and I was doing that. And then, technical person could go to see our, our technicians, our professional of B2G, of mobile, etc., etc. And I was here to um, ensure the, the link between those people, and it, really it worked. It worked because I was able to speak to everybody with simple words. So, that's something I hope you realize that uh, Average Jen and Joe can help you to reach the general public and to uh, understand the needs of the general public too. So now, how can you welcome Average Jane and Joe? The first step is to welcome them and to open some events to them. The next step is to make some efforts to speak to them normally with simple words. The final step is to propose them some contributions they could do more easily. So first, please, try to be sociable and friendly. I mean, um, if you want to welcome normal people, you have to be welcoming. So you have to leave your computer for a while. You know, when I come to Floss events, I've noticed that most of you are coding even at the stands. So, try to realize, we are general public, we have some difficulties to understand where we are and what we are doing here, because there are a lot of strange things, strange words, Linux, Mozilla, open source, strange stands, and the only thing we, we see is people that's all. So please, raise your head and smile. First thing to do. Um, y you have to take care of the public if you want to welcome the public. So leave your computer when you are at the stand. Or instead, go, go ahead and let people who is able to talk to the public staying at the stand. Um, the other thing is that I'm sorry for you, but you have to be prepared to answer to a lot of silly questions. It's true. Such as, how do you make money? In floss? Yeah, general public wants to know. They don't understand how you do. Um, why do you contribute without being paid? Or, why doesn't my computer work? <laughs> okay. You'll have to make sac sacrifices. It's true. But I know it's just boring to you to be the outline. And I know it's awful to you, and I understand. But if you want to reach the attention of the general public, you'll have to make some efforts. Um, very important, too, don't be too technical. Please. Don't enter in the details and accept the fact that normal people don't master technical terms, even the most simple. For instance, 
realize that most don't make the difference between browser and search engine. So what? We don't make the difference. I received a lot of uh, attack because I was saying, oh, Mozilla, yeah, it's a search engine. OK. What does it matter? What is the problem? The problem is, uh, if, is to me is to understand the floss philosophy. And then, OK, I'll give some false information. But it's my first step, so it's normal. Um, Take the time, please, to explain the most important subtleties, but not all the subtleties. Don't be focused on details. Average Jane and Joe are not stupid. Well, some of them are, but they just don't know your world. So be patient, be pedagogic, and please, forget the expression RTFM and TLDR. No way, never. Never RTFM. On the contrary, take advantage of his user experience. Ask general public what are his needs, and you'll learn some things. I have a suggestion. Um, if you're not ready to make all these sacrifices, I'm sure you can find in your community at least one person who is ready to co talk to normal people and to answer those awful, awful questions. So I've noticed that new members are often ready to face Mr. and Mrs. Nobody uh, because they are often more enthusiastic, not completely immersed in Flost, and so they can use, you can use this energy and send them, send your new members to uh, events, schools, put them on the stands, extra. In fact, try to find in your communities a Mr. Average friendly. Only one, it's a good point. For instance, in Mozilla, we have a young boy whose name is Schmal. He participated to our free hugs, this, these things. And uh, really, it was just astonishing. Um, he went to speak to old people, even to policemen, to speak about Mozilla. And uh, he wasn't afraid by uh, the ignorance of the general public at all. It was just incredible, really. And we did a lot. Uh, we, we found a lot of contributors these days, or a lot of uh, users, because it was so friendly, so generous, that really people uh, went to see us to, to understand what Mozilla was, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and that was a real good day for us. So here is how you can act to welcome our Jane and Joe, but now, since you can't be too technical, what can you say to normal people? Um, I've tried to think about what attracted me and what attracted my friends. And, um, well, you won't, be, you won't agree with everything, I know it, but uh, here are some things you can talk about to normal people. The first thing, in flaws, no price, no tax, no fees. I know that uh, flaws doesn't mean that it's gratis. I know it, but the fact is that um, the, the most of the time, it's gratis, and that's something that the general public loves and can understand. So that's a, point, a good point to attract someone. The other point, um, for instance, you can um, uh, speak about VLC or something like that. That's a good point to attract people, you know, saying, oh, you have VLC, it's gratis, it's good, extra, extra. Um, the other thing, of course, is floss philosophy. I tried to summary the floss philosophy according to people like me. You know, with the metaphor of the four liberties, with the cake, um, the, the love for internet, beers, of course, and people, people together. Um, if we can't understand what is technical, we can understand the values, and those values are very, very attractive for the general public. I'm sure of it. You can speak about the four liberties, the way we would like to change the world, contributing to flaws, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, for instance, to my friend, um, I explained that Firefox, on the contrary of IE or Chrome, is a browser with a soul, with values, and it works. Um, and the other thing you can talk about is community, of course community because once you've proved to every Jane or Joe that you're not only a beer, a geek, uh, but also a sensitive person, 
um, I'm sure they would like to better know the community. So they'll be very happy to discover this world of sharing of mutual art throughout the world, like we did in Senegal. So now, the contributions you can propose to over Jen and Joe. There are a lot, really. I'm sure you can find some. Um, the first one is organization, public relations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The the link there can be the link between you and the general public, and that's something very it's a big advantage to you. So um, please find your Mrs. Average and Mr. Average in your communities and put them on the stand. They'll be lovely. They'll be perfect to you. Uh, they can organize also events, of course. Um, they can do localization. It's Dino, the mascot of French Mozilla. <laughs> so they can participate to localization. We have a, a very good team uh, in France of localization, and they are really meeting and uh, welcoming some people uh, to, uh, to localize. And they, they are often um, average Jane and Joe. And it works, really. You can do support, you can propose support. That's Sumo, support Mozilla, but uh, you have uh, some, I think, some support in all communities. And that's also something you can propose to Mr. Average Jane and Joe because um, they would be able to put simple words uh, to explain a lot of things about flaws. So that's also something you can take advantage of Mr. Average Jane and Joe. And you can uh, choose them to do communication. That's Bonjour Mozilla, uh, a website I've created. And um, in fact, uh, each day I put in relief uh, a member of the community throughout the world. And uh, I think that's it's because I'm an average and I'm able to uh, put simple words to and to create a portrait of people, um, something very sensitive, not only technical. And people are very, very uh, pleased by, by this website. Um, and the, the other thing, uh, an average Jane or Joe can uh, also um, blog, of course, always with simple words, and that's a good point then to attract other people and, um, and so and so on. So that's all. Do you have questions? I, I need a translator for questions because I have some difficulties with English, so Delphine is going to help me because I often don't understand questions in English. I'm sorry. So yes? Getting ideas across to people, it's preconceptions that people have about open source and, and the community at, at large in that there is no quality or um, that they can only keep the status quo, in other words, certain proprietary operating systems, shall we say, and stuff like that. And especially when presenting to schools, it's, it's always the psychology, it's always the preconceptions. And I think, um, w what, what's your feelings on that? As a, we, we, can, we can be as open as we can and <laughs> as, as, as welcoming as we can but it's difficult to speak to people who, who aren't prepared to listen. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, so you, you're, you're saying that it's hard to, um, to break uh, misconceptions about, uh, about floss. That's it. Um, it's possible, um, but you have to, you have to uh, be aware of um, the appearance of gigs which isn't a, a wrong appearance. It's, I mean, I love gigs, really. I, I love them now. But um, sometimes, to break misconceptions, you have to be prepared, in fact. You really have to, um, I don't know, take, a, take something and write uh, ideas to, to get prepared if you face someone who have misconceptions. That's the first thing. That's something we could do, you know. Uh, I mean, I'd like to to do a list of um, misconceptions in flaws and then helping gigs to answer to these mis misconceptions. That would be a good point and some, some things, something you, can, you could use, maybe. Um, and about misconceptions, there are misconceptions everywhere. I mean, I, I'm a feminist and I know misconceptions about women also. 
and the, the, the fact is that um, you begin to open you to the rest of the world. Uh, I find this year that for them was more open than the, the, the precedent year um, because it's, it's evolving, really. I'm, I'm sure of it. Um, and, you, and the only thing you need to break misconceptions is humor. Humor, not, not, don't be too technical, very important, really. Very important because you, you'll, you'll um, lose your, um, your interlocutor if you're too technical. And, um, and stay on the philosophy, always the philosophy, be simple. And that's, you, I, I'm sure you'll, it, would, it would work. There is a danger, though, that if you always, shall we say, preach open source philosophy, which I believe in very much, that you are viewed as being some sort of idiot or nutter, or in inverted commas, um, open source religion. Whereas what you're trying to do is to put across a very good and useful idea to society. and. Um, that's it, really. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's the biggest difficulty that I've had. It's, oh, it's never the technicalities. It's never even me putting on a suit uh, and being Joe Businessman. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and being Joe Businessman. It's always getting over the preconceptions. Yeah. Anyway, I've talked enough. Um, <laughs> you, you'll face a problem uh, if you want to um, welcome general public, uh, is that uh, the world community often appears like a, a sect, you know? My, my father is, uh, is sure that I, I've entered a sect. <laughs> He's sure of it. Uh, fortunately, he met, he met my geek and he loves him, okay, but the, the word community is often very strange to him. And when he, see, he sees a lot of people wearing the same shirts, he's very, very afraid. To follow on to that point, I, um, I think we're actually at a, a very interesting time because with, you know, with, with the political situation around the world as it is, I think a lot of people are becoming aware of the, 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 the importance of their, their privacy and their data. Um, if you read some of the studies that, that, that have come out, um, you know, the, 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 the media myth is that, that people don't care about their privacy and they're happy to give away their data to Google Plus or to Facebook or to, to one of those behemoths. Um, but, but in reality, the, the, you know, that's not supported by the data. Um, and so I think that that's probably a, a, an excellent talking point, you know, to, to get people into the, the philosophy of it, you know. I, I, I certainly don't know anybody who, who likes using Facebook. People use it because it's, it's all that there is, and they, 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 they certainly don't think it's a, it's a good thing. And I think there is an increasing awareness of, 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 the, of what you're giving up to be, to be on that platform. And I think that's, that's, that could be one way that we could, uh, we could help people to, to see that floss is the way forward. We were checking it together because <laughs> 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 I'm so afraid of uh, don't understand something, so um, I prefer. Yeah. I have something that might lead to a question. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, we all here are very much um, convinced of our high principles, ideals. We want good stuff. But I think perhaps sometimes when pop talking to the general public, we are focusing too much on the high ideals. Shouldn't we aim much lower at the, the much more banal things? What's in it for me? What's in it for you? I don't see people um, demonstrating outside for open source or open standards, but they might do it for, take your hands off my MP3s or, well, there are, must be better examples, I don't, just don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I do agree with you, really. Um, 
I, I, I do think that sometimes we, we are maybe too much in the philosophy and the, the, the ideas of standards, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and that's too higher for the general public. That's true. That's why I, I've talked about um, prices and the, 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 the gratis, etc., cetera, et cetera, because uh, and so and so because. Um, it's an easy point to catch the, the attention, and even if it's, an, it's not totally true about flaws, it's something that people um, always... It's true enough. Them. Yeah. So you have this, and then you have just to, um, to show some softwares that are very useful to general public. Um, you can speak about VLC, for instance. The, it's a easy way to, to show something that uh, the general public often doesn't know. And to say you know, um, it's not only does it work, but it's free. It's, and then you can explain what it means. But uh, the first thing is to put in relief some um, attractive things for normal people. Like the price, like the fact that there are very efficient software, etc., etc. The other problem, the other problem is oh. <laughs> what? The other problem is as soon as you say it's safe, if it, it's free. The next question is if it's free, is it safe? Um. I have, if if they have to download it, it's all, it's immediately distrusted because yeah. there could be anything in it. Who made it? I don't know. Yeah, there's that's no company true. name. Um, but for instance, you can speak about Linux and saying uh, you'll have uh, no virus with Linux. Good point, too, for the general public. Yeah. Well, um, I actually uh, often have to face people who don't even know what they are using. Um, like, uh, what actually is a web browser? They, they don't even know that to go on the internet, they need a program. They, they don't know, know what an operating system is. How do I explain to those, um, to those people that they actually have a choice? Okay, um, it's true. We don't even, as an average Jane or Joe, we don't know often uh, what uh, is our web brother or, or such on Jane, etc. But the, what I wanted to, to show you through this talk is that, of, of course, you won't be able to welcome all the general public. But you can find some average Jane and Joe that are able to understand the philosophy, that are able to enter the community, and then you'll be able to use this average Jane and Joe to create a link between you as geeks, as uh, developers, etc., and the rest of the world. But for that, you have to welcome some normal people, more open in their mind, in a way, but um, non, no technical, no conceptual people, you know? It's just to um, find new kind of people in your communities. Okay, so uh, kind of people like myself, uh, I'm, I'm not technical at all. Actually, that's, that's my first open source event. That's it. Um, but I so wanted to highlight the, this need in the, in the floss for now, and, um, and then we'll be able, you, me, and other people, uh, non-technical people, will be able to, to create the link. And but it, will be, it will be slowly, of course, not, not easy to do. And also, the, the, the things you have to do is to convince your family, of course. Very important. That's quite hard. <laughs> With the preconceptions and the, the trying to convince people, the hardest thing I find is, if it's so good, why are you giving it away for free? That, that's the big difficult question. How do you answer yeah. that? Why is it free if it's so good? You get what you pay for, right? Yeah. Okay, um, I should add this uh, question in my list, if, it, if indeed, <laughs> because it's an awful question. <laughs> um, the, the only answer you can have is that uh, it's good because it's free, um, and um, it's a question of um, values. 
you have strong values, and so you want to make strong softwares, but free softwares because of your values. Um, and you don't have money. People, for instance, I've noticed that uh, when I'm giving talks about Mozilla, people really love when I'm saying that, that the budget of Mozilla um, is the equivalent of the budget of um, food in Google. Yeah. You know? The whole budget of Mozilla represents the budget of food in Google. And people love that because they say, wow, you're, you're doing a, a, an incredible thing with so, um, a few money, and, and they are very happy. Because anyway, you can take profit of this time. You know, with the crisis, it's a, it's a moment when um, people is um, going, um, they don't want more uh, capitalistic, um, even if I don't like politics, but um, I feel that people uh, need values at this time because of the crisis. And it's a good uh, moment to talk about flaws and to talk about those values because they are fed up with money, they are fed up with uh, all those things, with banks, etc., etc. And you're saying, okay, I'm bringing you something which is very efficient and free. Uh, first of all, thanks for your talk. Um, uh, you say that we should be uh, talking more about the philosophy, but when I explain that um, the freedom that you get is to be able to modify programs, they say, but I don't care, I'm never going to touch a program. Then I explain, okay, but think about your house. If your house would have been really completely closed, you would always have to call the same plumber to, change, uh, to fix your toilet, but it, because it's somehow open, you can call different plumbers. And yeah. then they say, ah, okay, okay. So I can always ask somebody else to fix it. But then you say that we should welcome average Jane and, and, and Jean to do contribution. But what do you think are low-hanging fruits for average people to contribute to our community? What are the easy things that we can ask average people to contribute into the community? Really, to, um, the, to do organization, to participate to the organization, to be uh, in, in, in some way the cheerleader, because geeks are very hard to, you, you're not organized the most of the time, and, I, and you're just forgetting a lot of things because you're coding and the, the, the rest of the things are just not important. You know, I, I live with a geek, so I, it's just hard sometimes. <laughs> and um, so you, you can take profit as this, and they will be very happy to, to be the cheerleader of, uh, of the movement and the, of the event, something like that. Um, the localization is really also a good point because um, they can, by this way, discover what exists in, the, in floss and translating, translating this in, in their own language. It's something mm -hmm. very easy and, and uh, very, uh, very good to understand some things and to, uh, to le learn some things also. Um, that's what I'm, why I'm, what I'm doing with um, Tunisian people, for instance, um, telling them that uh, they, 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 they can uh, translate uh, documents they need, but they are in English, and so they are translating uh, in Arabian and, uh, and in French too. And then by this way, they are learning the, the, the philosophy, they are learning uh, some technical things, and it's a good point too. Okay, good, thanks. I just have a comment on the on the last question. What can the average user do for the uh, for the community? Um, and yesterday there's been a, a similar talk by uh, Alison Randall, I think, and she told us, and I agree with her, that the average user can help improving manuals. We we techies tend to write manuals that are completely incomprehensible for the average user. Um, so so we need a, a link to the general public there, so we, everybody can help improving manuals, everybody can help doing support, like support forums, pick up a question, one question a week, and just answer that one question. Um, and as it, it, it's a huge help for, uh, for the community and everybody. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> At this time, okay, you, you, could do, you could say, read the fucking manual, but not <laughs> Always, please. <laughs> you know, it's when I'm on IRC, 
I often ask some questions and just to understand some, some things and, and what I receive is the link on the Wikipedia page. I hate this, really, I hate it. Really, it's just, you know, it's very boring for people like me. <laughs> Other questions? Okay. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that our community can do to attract uh, the average Jane rather than the average Joe. I'm not saying we should. I'm not <laughs> saying we should necessarily, but. In Poznan, you mean, Mike? Yeah, uh, just just to uh, um, you know, there are there is uh, a lot of there are a lot of ideas about attracting women to the gay community for a variety of reasons, and um, but there aren't a lot of ideas about attracting women users free software. So uh, what do you think about that? I thought you were talking more about women, not like about average Jane and Joe right now. Right? Um, uh, well, average, average Jane. As okay. Average Jane. Okay. Um, for average Jane, um, the first thing is to, um, the advice I can give you is uh, when, a, um, when a friend of yours finds a girlfriend, tell them, tell them to um, convince his girlfriend to bring your her friends. <laughs> the first thing. Um, thanks to me, geeks of Mozilla have met a lot of, uh, a lot of girls. <laughs> okay, they didn't manage to, <laughs> to get in love with them, but they, they, <laughs> they met them. <laughs> that was a good point. Um, mm, you know, I deeply think that uh, as gigs you're just lovely, and I'm very persuaded of, of that, but if you stay always behind your computer, you won't find love. <laughs> right. I meant that more in the sense of just attracting um, female users, uh, <laughs> not in the sense of, um, yeah, picking up girls. Yeah, really. Yeah, as she's saying that uh, you have to convince more uh, women to be, to be speakers in your event. That would be a good point too, because uh, we need to get represented uh, as women. And so more women geeks, more women users. There yeah, you go. really. <laughs> Thank you. Well, just to say that some of the best software engineers I have ever come across have been women. Yeah, 100%. More, no, seriously, because they tend to get head down and doing things and understanding things that a different way of thinking. And it's so sad that because, for instance, the focus in schools now is on using applications rather than teaching kids how to code, there are less women coming forward to a career and something they could do which they can kick men's butts just as much as anything else. And it's really sad. And it's, it's, it's a misconception that it isn't something, that it is too geeky. And I, I, th I, think, I think it is really sad. And I think if... if opening up to non-geeks, as you say. If we can take that to the schools, we will have more women here at FOSTEM. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. Also, we, we know, you know we are a member of um, WUMOS, Women in Mozilla. It's uh, an association in, um, in Mozilla, and we are trying to, to think about it and to, uh, to think about uh, the ways we could um, make more girls enter the, the computer sciences. But... Uh, it's the beginning, and it would be hard, of course. <laughs> Other questions? Well, um, this is my email, if you want to talk about. Uh, and this is my woman's hammer, just for the macho men. But, <laughs> but keep quiet, I'm not um, so awful. 
Thank you.